Hello, how are you doing today? I am doing well, thank you. And yourself? Oh, I am doing well. I was watching History Channel last night and they were talking about the combined DNA index system. And I thought that you would like to know what I saw. Yes, so was I. That system was implemented in 1998 by the FBI. Isn't it amazing that it combines computer and DNA technology to fight crime? And it links local, state, and federal DNA files. Yes, and it has the DNA samples from certain categories of offenders, like the people who are convicted of murder, rape, and child abuse. What happens when DNA matches a known suspect? That is when questions come up like, is the suspect incarcerated? Is the suspect out of custody, roaming in another jurisdiction? And, is the suspect's exact location known? You know that there was a case in 1995, an unidentified woman's body was found on a off-ramp along the highway in Iowa. After they identified her and taking into consideration where the body was found the police thought it might be a truck driver. Some biological evidence was found at the crime scene and sent to the FBI crime lab. Five years later the offender's DNA profile was made and it was uploaded to CODIS, where DNA matched an incarcerated man in Florida. And he had a commercial driver's license so he was a truck driver. Wow, when I was watching the show, they said that CODIS is usually used in cold cases. And when the investigators get a new tip off CODIS it opens the case for a second investigation. Speaking of that did you know that all US jurisdictions have legislation requiring the data banking of DNA? And they use CODIS to do so. Also in May 2007, the database contained over 4.5 million convicted offender profiles and more than 177,000 unknown forensic profiles found at crime scenes. The documentary also gave a little bit of history too. They said that CODIS was a pilot project in 1990. It started in six state and local crime labs to develop software to support each lab's DNA testing and allow sharing of DNA profiles with other crime labs. The Technical Working Group on DNA Analysis Methods developed guidelines for standards of practices in the U.S. crime labs when they began DNA testing. TWGJM was sponsored by the FBI lab in Quantico, Virginia to host several meetings a year on development of laboratory guidelines and peer review papers to support forensic DNA testing. The DNA Act of 1994 formally authorized the FBI to operate CODIS. The show did also explain how CODIS works. Oh really? How? It uses markers on the, the DNA strand. To be accurate, it uses 13 markers. But I must let you know that CODIS is not a criminal history database, like National Crime Information Center, the NCIC, and does not contain any personal identity information like names, dates of births, and social security. I know because it would be an issue with the Public and the Privacy Act. Could you imagine what a field day the press would have with that? Ha <laughs> ha. Speaking of the privacy, that is a huge controversy because CODIS was originally used to collect DNA of convicted sex offenders and this has expanded. Currently all 50 states have mandatory DNA collection on certain felonies. But other states have gone as far as collecting DNA from offenders convicted of misdemeanors and suspects arrested for a felony. You know originally CODIS consisted of the convicted offender index and the forensic index. But in recent years the arrestee index, the missing or unidentified persons index, and try missing persons reference index has been added. I know, like for example for solving rapes and homicides CODIS searches the forensic index against itself and the offender index. That is true because a forensic to forensic match provides an investigative lead that connects to or more previous unlinked cases. A forensic to offender match usually provides a suspect for an unsolved case. Would you like to hear any more about what else I saw on the documentary? Oh yes, I finding so interesting. I love to hear about the modern technology with law enforcement. Well, I will give you a little more then I have to go to a dinner. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, as of July 2009, CODI has produced over 94,000 hits and assisting in more than 93,000 investigations. And did you know that California maintains the third largest Vienna database in the world? Oh, really? Who would have thought of California? Yes, indeed. And because of the California proposition, it increased the scope of the Vienna database. Wow, I would have to guessed that California has a high crime rate. Yes, they do. Anyway, it was real nice talking to you again. Have a nice afternoon. You too take care, okay?